Water covers about 71% of the Earth's surface. 97% of the Earth's water is found in the oceans. This means a huge part of the total surface of the Earth. People living close to or along the shorelines such as the Kenyan coast stretching from Kuala to Lamu are intrinsically connected to the ocean. Their lives depend on it. A key to happiness and livelihood here is a healthy mangrove forest. For decades, the people living along the coastline have been using mangrove trees for building materials, firewood, making charcoal, and boats. In 2018, the government of Kenya imposed a ban on mangrove logging, citing environmental destruction, protecting water towers, and mitigating drought. The government's move to ban logging and timber harvesting in all public and community forests comes at a time when natural forests are facing rapid depletion. The ban was later lifted in February 2019 after the government considered the plight of the local communities who largely depended on the mangrove for their livelihoods. Dr. Eriko Kuku is a research scientist working with Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. According to Dr. Okuku, the green economy has been overexploited, and considering that 43% of Kenyan land is in the sea, the blue economy should be critically protected. The priorities that the government has are actually in a number of sectors, maritime sector, uh, maritime security, and the three which came free are directly involved in include uh, uh, fisheries, uh, ecotourism, and aquaculture. These blue carbon ecosystems can store large amounts of carbon for long periods and their protection reduces greenhouse gas emissions and supports climate change mitigation. The three ecosystems we've talked about are complementary. They could play a complementary roles. Huh? So the one that is most land was sites are the mangrove forests. So mangrove forests work is to protect the other ecosystems for, with the, from any danger from land was side. So if you have pollution coming from land, the first ecosystem that will receive uh, that stressor is a mangrove forest. If you have a lot of sedimentation coming from land, then all that uh, mangrove forest will try to retain that sediment, will try to clean uh, the pollution that uh, is coming from land before it gets to seagrass ecosystem that is lying in the middle. Mangrove forests may be one of the world's most underappreciated landscapes. Mangroves are coastal and riverside forests that thrive at interfaces between land and sea in the tropics and subtropics. They are one of the world's most threatened tropical ecosystems and huge areas have been cleared to make way for urbanization. There's what we'll call habitat degradation uh, uh, and it's happening because of a number of things. When uh, the human population is increasing and uh, of course urbanization that is related to that, we require a lot of support for mangroves. You know that most of the houses along the Kenyan coast, they use mangrove poles for building. The sturdy root systems of mangrove trees help form a natural barrier against violent storm surges and floods. River and land sediment is trapped by the roots, which protects coastline areas and slows erosion. This filtering process also prevents harmful sediments from reaching coral reefs and seagrass meadows. Mangrove trees provide important habitat for a wide variety of terrestrial and marine species. These range from fish to birds and manatees, supplying nutrients and sediments for seagrass bed and coral reef habitats. The mangrove forests, also called tidal forests, are usually formed as a result of tides. Mangroves act as a shock absorbers by reducing high tides and waves, thus helping in preventing soil erosion. They are not only relatively easy to plant and can withstand challenging soil conditions, but they also play a part in protecting some of nature's most vulnerable species. Due to the high concentration of nutrients which flow in and out of mangrove lagoons with the tides, these forests provide vital breeding and nursery grounds for an array of marine animals such as crabs, turtles and small fish. The negative impact of climate change has adverse effects to marine life. Unlike other varieties, 
The mangroves thrive in areas with low oxygen soil where slow moving waters allow sediments to accumulate. This ability to survive where most tree species would struggle is what makes these trees more unique. Mangrove forests have a phenomenal capacity for carbon separation, a process by which carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere and held in soil or liquid form, which helps to mitigate global warming. Little responsibility has been taken in protecting the existing mangrove forests. However, in Mombasa and its environs, there are various efforts being made to take care of mangroves along the coastal town of Mikindani. One such group making strides in conservation is the Big Ship Organization. Big Ship is an environmental organization, uh, community and people-centered, which works basically in matters of uh, promoting sustainable development by empowering local communities through environmental conservation programs. Climate change refers to the long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. These shifts may be caused naturally through variations in the solar cycle. Unfortunately, in recent years, human activities such as burning fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas have been the main driver of climate change. Juma Bosco is well aware of the importance of conserving these trees to the environment and the community as a whole. We as an organization, we are very much uh, connected with the local communities and our activities have been geared towards three important areas. One, promoting awareness and conservation of marine, especially the mangrove. That's why wetland is very important to us. Two, we are promoting sustainable production and consumption, and that is in matters relating to waste management. And three, we are working on urban resiliency, basically supporting uh, the local communities and the local poor in matters of adapting and mitigating on climate change. Agatha Nafula is a mangrove field officer working with a big ship organization. She understands the pressure that coastal development has had on the mangroves. As we all know, the sun radiates heat after radiating heat, those, the heat transfer is absorbed by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So mangroves absorb carbon from the atmosphere and in this way it reduces the effects of global warming. In Mikindani, we meet Juma Hussein, a resident of Mombasa. He is a volunteer scout helping in the planting and conservation of mangrove trees in Chuda Creek. I've been here for more than 40 years. I've been here for Mikindani and I've been here for a Agatha works alongside Juma in the management of the forest in Chuda Creek. They make regular visits to the area and monitor closely the progress of the forest. We mainly work with the community adjacent to the forest as a way of, as a way of protecting the forest and also for sustainability. We, we provide alternative activities such as to the community, such as beekeeping. Juma has witnessed the decline in the number of mangrove trees in this forest firsthand. According to him, the decrease in the forest cover can be largely attributed to human interference. This is what prompted him to immerse himself into the conservation of these trees. <laughs> Mimi binafsi kajitoleta hata ngatakuwa kama mzinga. Mbali na kwamba watu wanapanda wakipata ujira. Lakini sio ujira unaisha. Umelipwa, umepanda, umelipwa. Pesa unatumia imeisha. Lakini sasa mimi binafsi ngajitolea kama scout. Nikaamua kuilinda. Nikipata mtu anayekata, namuongelesha. Namleta katika njeli ya sawa ili kuomba siwezi kudhurunu ule mkoko kwa sababu pale ndio ponyuke anapata chakula 
Studies have shown that the coastal ecosystems of mangroves, tidal marshes, and seagrass meadows contain large deposits of withdrawn carbon, which in turn plays a huge role in tackling climate change. However, this process is only achievable if the ecosystems remain untouched and undamaged. If they are degraded or damaged, directly or indirectly by human activity, the carbon sink capacity can be adversely affected. If this happens, the carbon stored in the soil will be released, resulting in carbon dioxide emissions. There are two major sources of pollution or types of pollution. One is the discharge of raw sewage uh, into the sea. And uh, this happens from two ways. You know that uh, Mombasa initially it was a very small island and the sewerage system that was developed those years was meant for that small population that was there 20 years ago. And the population of Mombasa has more or less doubled uh, in the last uh, uh, few years. And uh, this has one direct impact is that when you increase the number of people, then the waste that they generate also increases. Most of uh, uh, people or uh, the, the, the houses that we have along the coast use uh, the, the, the sock pits. Uh, that is another impact because uh, even this sewage that uh, the, there's a little seepage from the sock pits into underground water and underground water ultimately ends in the sea. As the risks facing nature increase, environmentalists are always looking for new ways to tackle issues such as deforestation, climate change, and carbon emissions. The 2016 Climate Change Act was passed into law by the Kenyan Parliament to provide a regulatory framework for enhanced response to climate change by providing mechanisms and measures to achieve low-carbon climate development and for connected purposes. The Act seeks to integrate the national and county governance functions and to enhance cooperative climate change at all levels. In this respect, the community has a big part to play in ensuring that the forests are protected. How we are working with the communities to conserve the mangrove ecosystem, one has been very importantly uh, bringing alternative sources of livelihood. This is Philip Thoyer. He is a resident of Mombasa and has taken it upon himself to do all he can to stop pollution in his environment. Tuko katika site inaitwa tunaita Marefa Material Recovery Facility. So this is a company inaitwa Cobwam Limited. Wa urefu ni community based waste management model. So this is a model that we came up with to manage waste at the community level. Philip believes that what they are doing is more than a source of income to them. We deal with plastic, two, we deal with glass, clear glass, three, we deal with aluminum foils, uh, white paper and cartons or boxes. So those ones we normally buy, then take them for recycling. So by so doing, we are we, we are actually promoting or we are supporting best waste management practices. They have established a system through which they are able to reach out to the community where they encourage and mobilize them to participate in cleaning the seabed by getting the solid waste to the designated dumping sites. Whatever we do here is we rely on the records that the resource collection or resource collectors to collect waste from the community or from the households from schools and other entities or other areas whereby later on they bring it here. We have a transfer station. But apart from the taka now, kunazile resources ambazo watu nazichukua, sisi kama kobwa. So we buy a number of resources of which normally wanazita ni west, but for us we call it a resource. So kwanza, kobwa is operating under two strategies. One, the RECO, that is resource collection, and two, the MRF, that is material recovery facility. But the enabling factor is the RECO, that is resource collection. Philip is not the only one who feels strongly about keeping the environment clean. Zainab, a photographer born and raised in Mombasa, is equally concerned 
about the deteriorating state of the coastline. Right now we are at Mombasa Beach uh, in Mombasa County, Kenya. And I am I'm a photographer, uh, mostly do wildlife and landscape, and sometimes portraits and events. While Philip continues to collect the garbage at the shoreline, Zainab takes photographs of the pollution at the beach and uses them to sensitize the masses on the importance of keeping the beaches clean through social media campaigns. Her social media campaigns have reached far and wide. I started out with, of course, uh, taking photos of buildings, people and, and, and places, uh, and eventually got into wildlife and landscape photography. So I've been involved with nature for the last five years or so. And Mombasa is my hometown, so I've, I've, I also love the ocean. A lot of good memories happen at the ocean. You know, family, friends, birthdays, cousins and a lot of events have happened in the ocean so whenever I think about the ocean I think good memories my childhood so last year um, a lot of talk was happening around marine pollution and there was this uh, residency art residency called Bahari Huru Art Residency I applied as an artist as a photographer uh, it was hosted by Jukwa Arts Production it's here in Mombasa that's how I got involved in, in ocean conservation and marine pollution, talking about it through art. I really wanted to be part of the conversation around ensuring that what I enjoyed as when, I was, when I was young, many can enjoy as well. I wouldn't imagine a future where people cannot go and enjoy the beach. But polluting our environment but also the ocean has, has led to a number of things. Uh, affected the climate. Other than the statistics we hear or uh, you know research being done about animals confusing, uh, let's say the turtles confusing jellyfish or other plastic bags for jellyfish uh, and, and, the, and, and other, other, other animals of course like other fish. The effect of fish eating the, the, the trash we throw into the ocean and somehow the particles getting back to our plate. There's also the effect of our environment no, not looking as clean and as aesthetic as, as, it, as, as it used to be. So now the public beaches, we have to constantly clean them because there's so much trash being thrown around. It goes without saying that mangrove trees have a great impact on the human population living along the coastal areas as well as the aquatic ecosystem. I Ultimately, protecting these mangrove forests is key. Therefore, there is need to induce a social change behavior to the people who live along the coastline by involving them in climate change mitigation measures before it's too late.